Number 1. Before you hop into a vanilla or official server, try to join a bow deathmatch server because that will be definitely the one weapon you craft and use the most, just to get familiar with how to aim it, shoot it etc. Number 2. If you find official servers too crowded, you can try to find smaller servers with less player slots. It would help you discover the game in a less hectic way until you get familiar with the basics. Number 3. A lot of beginners tend to harvest every resource at the start including sulfur nodes. The only three resources you will need to harvest at the start are cloth, wood and stone in order to make a bow and arrows, sleeping bags and build a base. Number 4. In the game options, taking down the gibs to the minimum will help you avoid lag spikes and even potential game crashes when structures and deployables get destroyed nearby. Number 5. Rust has a beautiful soundtrack, but having that music unpredictably play at random moments could screw you over by not letting you clearly hear what's happening around you. So, if you are not playing on a roleplay server, I would advise you to turn the music off. Number 6. There are some image effects that really make the game much harder to see, such as depth of field and motion blur. They just make your screen a lot more blurry and hard to focus on. They are mainly useful for making cinematic content look nicer. Number 7. When you get a decent amount of resources and want to build the first base, don't build a big one, a 1x2 is way more than enough for a starter, and doesn't require more than a couple thousand stone and wood to make. Number 8. Always remember to upgrade your foundations first, and upgrade your double door frames before you place the doors to avoid forgetting, as it's pretty common when you start playing. Number 9. Remember to place your TC in the safest place in your base, and lock it, since without it, anyone could easily grief you. Number 10. If you play solo, you can make key locks to lock your doors, which only require wood to make, unlike code locks that require metal fragments. You can also lock these without having to create a key, since it's risky to go outside with a key that anyone could take if they kill you. Concerning base building, I won't go into the details of it since we have a video that we just made dedicated to teaching beginners everything they need to know about base building, a link to it will be left in the description. Number 11. If you struggle a lot staying alive while farming outside your base, consider settling next to one of the safe zones. As long as you don't hit anyone or any animal, you can run there for safety when things get messy. Number 12. Food. Leather and animal fat can be harvested from animals. Animal fat allows you to make low-grade fuel, which is used for multiple recipes, mainly the furnace, which is the most important one early on. Number 13. Animals are made so they don't hit players inside their bases, meaning anyone on a foundation. So if you want to kill an animal without it attacking you, just make a twig foundation and stand on top of it while killing it. Number 14. After you kill the animal, you will need to harvest it. Any tool allows you to do so, but some are better than others, both in the speed of harvesting and the quantity of resources you get from it. Usually a combat knife or a bone knife are the best. Number 15. If you click on a tool in your inventory, you can check its stats, including its harvesting power. The red coloration of the slider indicates how much resources are lost while using that tool. For example, a metal pickaxe loses a lot of flesh, unlike a bone knife that gathers 100% of the resources. Number 16. Comfort can be provided with multiple items, such as a campfire, chairs, rugs, fireplaces and furnaces. Comfort helps you convert food points into health points if your hunger bar is above 100. The higher the comfort level is, the more health points you can gain. Number 17. If you have comfort and food but aren't able to gain health points, it's either because you are dehydrated, too cold, too hot, or losing health through a bleed or radiation poisoning. Number 18. Speaking of healing up, when you take damage, you can heal a portion of your health by drinking water. Number 19. 
Water also helps you get rid of radiation poisoning. Every 50 milliliters of water neutralize 5 radiation points. Number 20. Food also helps you gain health over time. Some foods are better than others in that matter. Pumpkins and cooked chicken are usually the best, providing 10 health over time points for each piece. 21. Health over time will be completely cancelled if you take any type of damage. So wait for it to finish healing you before you engage in anything risky. 22. Bleeds also take a huge toll on health over time. Use bandages to stop the bleed before you eat food or drink tea that provides health over time. 23. Hydration, unlike food, doesn't kill you when it reaches zero, but rather makes you unable to sprint. 24. Having multiple bags around your area is never a bad idea to avoid having timers and also be able to flank your enemies from different angles. 25. A lot of beginners commit the mistake of placing multiple bags right next to each other to avoid spawn timers, not knowing that if they place too close to each other, bags will share the same timer. 26. You can know if a new sleeping bag you're about to place is sharing the same spawn timer with another one of your bags, by it being orange before you place it. When it's blue, it doesn't share a timer. 27. When you manage to find a bed in a crate, try to research it ASAP and place it down inside your base. It only has a 90 second cooldown instead of the sleeping bag's 300 seconds cooldown, which will make a drastic change in outcomes if you are getting raided for example. 28. If you can't get your hands on a band, you can research one through the level 1 workbench's tech tree. It is definitely worth the scrap. 29. Splitting ore inside a furnace makes it cook faster. 30. If you want to split a stack of ore into 3, you can hold down shift and press the middle mouse button on the quantity bar after you select the stack you want to split. 31. Splitting into half is easier. Just click and drag the stack you want to split with the middle mouse button towards an empty slot. 32. In the quick crafting menu, you can click the middle mouse button on an item you want to craft and it would queue up 5 instead of 1. Before we move further, I wanted to let you guys know that only 1.9% of you who watch this channel are actually subscribed to it. I wanted to ask you to consider subscribing as it helps us out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And also, we have a Discord server with a great community where we host new skin giveaways every week. A link to it is in the description. 33. On top of being a safe zone, Outpost sells a lot of useful resources and items for scrap. Some are more worth it than others like 200 metal fragments that are sold for 25 scrap and 20 low grade fuel that goes for 10 scrap which are both really good deals early on. 34. Bandit Camp sells a lot of useful items including very high tier weapons. Note that you can also gamble your scrap in the main lounge of said location. Not that I would advise you to do so, but it's worth mentioning that you might score some lucky spins every now and then, so it could be worth settling next to a bandit camp. 35. If you struggle finding cloth where you live, you can buy tactical gloves from the outposts for 40 scrap each and recycle them then recycle the sewing kits they provide, then the rope, which all give approximately 200 cloth while recycled. 36. If you get your hands on a rowboat, you might want to try to get the junk piles that spawn in the ocean, as they can be better than roads for getting components and scrap, and not as crowded with people. 38. On the ocean's surface, you might notice little white bottles like these floating. These bottles indicate that there is a crate underneath. You can dive in, untie the crate and loot it. There are two types of underwater crates, large ones that look like this and small ones. Both can be very profitable to go after. Note that you need scuba diving gear to get them. 39. Always recycle your excess components that you want to use in the near future, as it's the quickest way to get high quality metal, metal frags, cloth and scrap. 40. 
The attack helicopter is an event that happens every couple in-game days. The helicopter will patrol the map and shoot people, but it doesn't shoot everyone. If you have two or less pieces of clothing and don't have a weapon in your hotbar, it won't target you. You are allowed to have meds, tools and a bow in your hotbar without it targeting you. 41. If the helicopter gets aggroed on you, it will keep shooting at you until you die, even if you remove your clothes and weapons. 42. Avoid going inside your base to hide when the heli aggroes on you, since it will rocket and napalm your base. If it's wooden, it will imminently get destroyed. If it's stone, it has a high chance of destroying a wall or a roof. 43. Scientists can be harvested with a tool for cloth and bone fragments. Usually, every scientist gives around 15 cloth. 44. Junk pile scientists could be a good way to get metal tools and meds to research early on. 45. If you're a beginner, you might not know this, but some monuments in the game have CCTV cameras in them that you can watch using a computer station by typing the codename for that CCTV in the computer station. We have a dedicated video showcasing every CCTV in every monument, along with its code, location and the view from it. For the sake of keeping this video short, I will link the other one in the description. 46. You can know if someone has hacked into a CCTV by the green light that displays on it. This applies to all CCTVs, even the ones that are placed manually. 47. While shooting guns, especially semi-automatic weapons, you have to crouch, otherwise the recoil will be uncontrollable. Here's a comparison. 48. Holding R allows you to select multiple ammo types to reload if you have them in your inventory. 49. If you download the Rust Plus app on your phone, you can pair it with the server you're currently on. The app will notify you when you die while sleeping, so if you disconnect in an airlock inside the base and get the notification that you got killed, it means that someone is raiding you. 50. If you plan on farming large amounts of stone nodes and or ores, consider making a trip to the snow biome, as it spawns the most amount of nodes in the entire map. This video was brought to you thanks to serverblend.com. If you're looking for a stable and reliable server host with the best support team, then Serverblend is the way to go. A link to their website will be left in the description.